friends, welcome to the last Wednesday live, live stream of 2021. We are going to take a look today at what I've been doing and what I'm going to keep doing through the rest of the holiday of this season, and perhaps I'll continue going forward. This is, this is looking through your library, working through your library, playing through your library. I like that title best, playing through your library. There are so many ways that we can play music. Last week I talked about noodling, which was just starting in some place and, and uh, on your instrument and then playing the next thing without necessarily knowing what it was. But I, I noodled in the holidays in order to be able to begin finding relationships of notes one to the other in intervals that started to suggest some Christmas carols to me. And then I started playing the Christmas carols, and boy, did I have some fun. And I hope uh, there were some comments from people who said they weren't quite sure how to do that process, and they uh, felt kind of locked in because I think they were trying to... Um, feeling like there was a right way to do something. I must do this or I'm not the, I'm not doing it the right way. And you know, and they could think of one tune that they had memorized or something like that. And the point of that process was not to play something, but in the process of starting somewhere, as you move up and down the fretboard or as you move around on your hammered dulcimer soundboard, that you would start to find some things that sounded familiar. And noodling is when you just do that. You may not be able to play a whole song, but you can find the pieces that sound familiar. Shifting gears. Today, we're going to talk about playing through our library. Now, you probably have some books on a shelf or some resources on a... Let's see. You can't see that. I got to take it out of here. Resources on a tablet that you may have been collecting for a period of time, or you might have a big binder that's full of a lot of uh, music that people have given you. A lot of times we collect all these things with the best intentions and then we never get back to them. As, as someone who learned at a distance from everyone else, because there wasn't an internet. There were no festivals that were close by where I was. There were very few recordings. I did find Dulcimer Players News, which I highly recommend, a quarterly magazine dedicated to the playing of these instruments that we love. Um, I should, I'll should i put that into the chat. If you don't know about Dulcimer Players News, you should be a subscriber if you play Dulcimer. Dulcimer Players News. I think it's dpnews.com. Let's see. It is. Let me put that in the chat. But I began in through that magazine where people were sharing the music that they played. I began to understand that some other people were trying to figure out how to do this in their own way too. But what I started doing is going to my library, and I'm going to shift cameras here so that we can look at these over my shoulder. Here's a book that I got when I was in Scotland in, oh my geez, 21, 21 and a half years ago. Kill and the Fiddle, Highland Tunes for the Fiddle, Volume 3. Now, there's nothing in here that suggests either kind of dulcimer. It's just the tune as if a fiddler is going to play. And I don't know if you can see that I have a notation system that I've kind of developed here. I played this with a tenor recorder on the 25th of April in 2003. And let's see, is there another one here? Yeah, this mark here, the star tells me that on the 15th in 2015, in uh, July 10th, I played that on DAD Dulcimer, and I liked it. That's my star is my, ooh, yes, let's do this. I use a check mark if it's just been played. Let's see here. Ooh, this is one I played yesterday. P.M. McDonald McLean of Lewis. Yep, that was fun. Um, here's a check mark. I played it. 
just to show that I played it. But I'm, I have, I realized that I always start at the front of this book, and then I got so far, and there are a bunch in the middle that I don't have any notes on. And so what I'm doing this time is I started at the back, and I just started working through everything from the back to the front, which led me to the stress bay section, which I they never start with stress bays, and I love stress bays. So um, this is that's what I'm doing, and I'm not even using a dulcimer for this. I'm using a keyboard because I thought, well, heck, let's just see what happens if I do it that way. While I was in that process, I found this book from Estonia, uh, one of the song books that my son, when he's an actor in Canada, and he and his fiance, who is an, also an actor, were booked to film a, a bank commercial for a German bank in Estonia, two Canadian actors. <laughs> So when they went to Estonia, one of the things they did was find some songbooks and bring them. And so I pulled these out yesterday. Musical notation, very small, but it's like some of these sound very interesting. Some of them are two-part things. Just a whole different Finnish music. I haven't spent much. I mean, Estonian music. I spent no time in Estonian music. It makes me think of Finnish music, which I've played some of. That led me to uncover this book that I got from the Kansas City Jazz Museum when I was on tour with Aaron May in the summer of 2019, Jazz Improvisation and History. Now, this looked really good. I hadn't, I realized I hadn't really read anything in it. So I started, and uh, the author, Ahmad S. Aladdin, has got some handwritten exercises and warm-ups and things that he, he does. It's about helping to know what are some improvisi improvising possibilities and when and how could you use those? He starts off by saying, though, this is not a beginner's book. You need to have some chops already. So I started playing these. Now, these are things that need to be played on a chromatic instrument. So I played them on the, on the keyboard, but I could also play them on my guitar. If I had a chromatic mountain dulcimer, I could do that. Good morning, Mark. How are you doing? Speaking of the devil. Okay, so I have... These three things I started with, but in the course of everything, I started digging up some other things that I hadn't thought about. I got this one from Dr. Mark Allen Wade last year, Classical Masterpieces for the Hammer Dulcimer. I highly recommend it. But I realized in the same way with the other ones, I'd started at the beginning and I hadn't made it very far. And so now I need to pull this out and go through these. Now these, this is a book which is focused on arrangements for the hammer dulcimer. So I got my hammer dulcimer right here. I can play that. I can work on those. And Mark has got a lot of experience. Great, great, uh, great resource there. I may not want to do something. This, this is more, the Portland collection is one of the many contradance collections, all tunes. There's nothing in here. Morrison's jig. I love Morrison's jig. Says, I played this one and felt good about it on the 3rd, uh, the 11th of March in 2002. Now, I'd played it way before that. But here's Hangman's Reel. I first learned from Rick Thumb. So this ends up being kind of like a journal. Um, I've worked through a lot of these starting at the front. I can see. I wonder if I've done the ones from the back. I have done some of them. So that's another one. Um, Stephen Humphreys has got a couple of great hammer dulcimer books that I have that it's time to go through. The Rudimental Approach and Two Hands, One Mind, a method for hand independence on the hammer dulcimer. So some educational kind of things that are focused on developing skills. <laughs> You're welcome, Peggy. <laughs> This is a free trip. And, you know, if you don't want to take a guilt trip, you don't have to. You, just because somebody gives you a ticket doesn't mean you have to get on. <laughs> Mountain dulcimer skills. Aaron O'Rourke's faster, cleaner, better. And uh, this, I remember when Aaron May and I were looking at this, um, when we were, he and, and she and I were all at a festival. And it's like, oh, that's what he's doing. <laughs> we both said, yes. I wonder if that's what I'm doing. Neil Hellman's a good friend of mine, and 
and his uh, Celtic songs and slow airs for the mountain dulcimer could be a much more uh, relaxed way of going through. He's got a bunch of history and stuff in front, which is descriptions of the tunes, which I like. And, uh, and Neil is really focused on getting all the articulations and everything clear. And I, I love that. So I can't wait to be looking in there. Here's one that I forgot I had. You may be like this too. Songs of the Cowboy for Mountain Dulcimer by Vicki Stuckert in Ohio. She's living in my hometown and, um, I, we just connected. We didn't know that we had dulcimers in common. And, uh, so there's, there's a lot of fun cowboy songs in here. And I think I've only played one. So it's time to go back and, and, and spend some time in there. And that led me to, oh, I'd forgotten all about these books from Judy Klinkhammer. Judy is someone who lived wonderful soul who lived in uh, Mountain View, Arkansas, who, loved more than anything else, getting people started playing. So she's in this one talking about, well, for beginners and intermediate, how to use a one and a half fret and then whistle and skip as her finger picking for the dulcimer smooth and easy for beginner and intermediate. Judy, uh, I loved singing um, duets with Judy and she always, she always loved uh, saying she sang, she, she loved, she said she loved, playing or singing them with me. Um, but she was someone who always made you feel more happy about life and made you feel better about what you were doing. And I will always remember when she finally passed, it was on my birthday. So now we share, share something uh, differently than we did before. But what I'm doing is not working through here, and I may not come up with anything that I ever want to perform. I may not come up with any tunes that I want to even play or, or add to my repertoire, but I also may. The point is, I'm as I'm doing this, I'm uh, sight reading, and we've talked about that several different times, and we've recently in the live streams talked about skills to use for sight reading. But the purpose is I'm looking at what has been written down and translating that through me to see, oh, can I do this? Now I'm doing the I've been doing these other ones on keyboard. And some of these, and we got some mountain dulcimer books, got some hammer dulcimer books. I'll work on those on their instrument or I'll take Mark's hammer dulcimer book and work on that on the mountain dulcimer. Or maybe I'll take it to the keyboard. Maybe I'll play it on the guitar. Because I'm a multi-instrumentalist, one of the things that happens is each different instrument I play teaches me something about the one just before it. It's kind of like language for me. When I learned Latin, it helped me understand English better. When I learned German, all of a sudden Latin was in my head. When I learned Spanish, all I could think was German. So it's like they all start to work together. They can be confusing, <laughs> but they are also ways to, for me, now your brain may not work like this. You may be a straight line person. I am not a straight line person. So I can't, I rarely can go junk A to B. I've got to go A to Z to X to P to L to M to X, back to X, to U to B. B. I have to go around the neighborhood. In fact, uh, somebody was saying once that they were stuck. They had a book and they just couldn't get any further in it. And I said, you know, I've always got two or three books I'm reading at the same time. And they end up all informing each other. So that the book that I don't understand when I read the other book helps me understand the first one. When I was in graduate school, that happened a lot. There were I'd read from this this uh, Salvadoran writer, and I didn't understand exactly what he's talking about. And then I read the German writer who helped, who I didn't understand. But when I read him, he made my El Salvadoran author make sense. And then I go back to the Salvadoran author, and all of a sudden the German made sense. And I was not reading these in Spanish or German. I was trying to read them in English. <laughs> but it was like, 
I don't have a ladder, but I've got these two walls. Can I walk myself up like Spider-Man using both walls as a way to get to higher or deeper understanding? That was going in both directions at once, wasn't it? So it's, it's work in the sense that I set myself to do it. But for me, it's really a playful time. So, um, and I, I like what you said, Peggy, about the inspiration. Um, yes, somebody else can be very inspiring to me just because of the way they looked at something or they pulled this together from someplace. And I would, you know, that's the way I feel with this, this Highland Tombs book. I, you know, I haven't, I've visited Scotland. I've not lived there a long time. And to, there are some really fun tunes in here that I haven't, haven't heard of or seen before. They're like six, eight tunes that feel like Strasbays because there is the, the long, short, long, short hornpipe type rhythm. And then a snap all of a sudden, which is the short, long rhythm. That's a feature of Strasbays. I don't think I'd seen them in six, eight timing before. And typically, I think of six eight timing as a rig, as a jig, as a rig. It's a jig. But now, it they're fun. <laughs> they're fun. And one of the things it does for me, you get to the end of the year, you've got um, maybe some performances. Maybe you have some carol singing with your friends. You have some sense of, I uh, wonder if I, what I did this year was enough. Um, I'm preparing for what's coming next in the coming year. And I just, sometimes you just feel a little bit jaded. You feel bored. Um, and this, going through my library and playing it, and, and making it the goal to just play in the library, for me, is a way to reinvigorate and be creative. So sometimes creativity is taking an empty piece of paper and a writing instrument and coming up with some time, something. Sometimes it's doing the equivalent of that on an instrument where... I don't have a plan for what I'm going to do, and then I do something. Sometimes it means embracing something that's just new to me. So that's that's what I'm doing right now. And I encourage you to, to find the thing for you that is like that. You may not. Maybe you're new to this and you don't have a big library. Um, maybe you have come to this in the time since YouTube and online videos and instruction have been available and you've had access to things that a lot of us never did, um, the library that I have that's physical has, is helpful. Um, it, it, here's, here's a couple ways that I find it helpful. Uh, when it's available to me, when I lived in California, I didn't have room to have my library in my studio. And so most of my library were in boxes. And I people would ask a question. I knew the book I was looking for. I didn't know which one of the 13 boxes it was in. And so I was just frustrated all the time. And sometimes I could find I was what I was looking for on the internet. But you know, this library that I've been collecting for 40 plus years, not all of it's available online. There's a lot available online, but not everything. And... Um, when I go and find something that I've had for a while, or like the one from the Kansas City Jazz Museum that I forgot I got, <laughs> I all of a sudden I start getting delighted by the rea the realization that I'm not the first one to do this. Duh. Most of us recognize that all the time. But when you've been doing it for a long time, and there's always people coming who have never done it before, it can feel like, well, I'm giving you the early, I'm, I'm launching you, and I can forget that there were people doing it long before me, which is why I can do it. Um, got the benefit of their of their expertise. When I first started playing the mountain dulcimer, 
there was nobody around. I didn't, I was in Ohio, but I wasn't connected with any of those people. I didn't know how to find those people. And then I left Ohio. <laughs> so I built my mountain dulcimer, went to Michigan, went to Chicago, went to Denver. So in th I had it for three years trying to learn how to play it. And I went to the library, checked out the physical library, the brick and mortar one, checked out the one book they had um, that was I could find un, in the card catalog with Dulcimer in the name. And I checked it out, and it made half sense. I, it felt like it was half right. I couldn't tell which half was right and which wasn't. I realized I brought a bunch of baggage to the process because I'd played piano and other chromatic instruments before, and I'd never played a modal instrument, had no idea what that was. And I kept being frustrated by what I couldn't do rather than be, being, being delighted by what I could do. And it took three years for that process to change for me to be delighted by what my instrument would do and how elegantly it could do it. And so that's one of the reasons that Linda and I started Dulcimer Crossing because we don't think it should take anybody as long as it took me. I, I don't know if her path was shorter than mine. I know that mine took a while. And uh, I teach a class quite often called What I Wish I Knew When I Started Playing my hammer dulcimer because I, I played, I did a lot of things. I built them and rebuilt them um, for 13 years before I decided to try to figure out how it actually worked. And once I did that, boy, did I get excited. And it's like Wilbur and Orville Wright <laughs> um, trying to fly. That's what it felt like. I, I was just trying to fly for so long. And once I could do it, then, oh, that was fun. Now I'm just refining the flight. So that's where I am today as we come to the end of the year. There are a couple of things that I want to call attention to and that are coming up. And let's do Chrome tab. Um, Dulcimer Players News is a way to find out. This is a quarterly magazine that's physical. Um, there is an online or a way to listen to the sampler each quarter. It features both mountain and hammer dulcimer music. And the festival directory can let you know when things are happening. Um, there's one in January I'm going to tell you about that's not on this list. Um, but there are these are in-person and virtual. And so you'll have to check on them to see which ones you want to listen to or are interested in. Here's a brand new one that's coming up. The Dulce Moon. It's, uh, it's open to everyone, but it's all women-led. This is going to take place January 13th to 15th. Oops, it says 2023. I think... I thought that was 2022, but just keep an eye out for this one. Um, Karen Mueller, Tina Bergman, uh, organized by Dulce, DJ Hamoris, Judy House, Aaron May Lewis, and Sarah Kate Morgan. Um, so that one's coming up. And let's stop there. I guess you didn't get to see that. Let me just share that so you can see it. I'm going to have to confirm. I should know that by next week. There we go. There it is. I wonder why that keep popping back and forth. I'm going to stop sharing that. And uh, several of us who teach online are beginning, are getting ready to inform and launch our winter courses that will start in January. I know Erin Mae Lewis has got hers already up. And... Um, my first one that be, will begin next week, which is my dulcimer-friendly evening prayer service, 
Uh, this will be focused on Lent. We did this in the fall and focused on Advent, and then we had a four-week play-along service every Wednesday night. We're going to do the same thing again for Lent. And so the, the learning of the evening prayer service starts in January, and then the Lent tune starts in February. And then beginning in March, we'll have six weeks of the Wednesday evening prayer as an opportunity for us to play along on Zoom. And that's that's coming right up. So I wish you well as we get to the turn the corner from this year into the next year. It has been such a joy to join with you every week. I'm planning to continue to do this in the new year and uh, figure out a way um, I've been working on the archive of the live events so that we know thematically what we've been talking about and notice the kinds of things that might need to be focused on in the future. And uh, Dulcimer Crossing members, workshop and mentor level have access to all the, um, the replays of these. You, they're curated in order you can do the same thing on this Facebook page for Dulcimer Crossing. And um, and they're also available on our YouTube page as well, just not in the curated version. So if you want to poke around and see what's happening, this is the place to do that. But I wish you well, and uh, happy, happy new year to you. See you next week.